Hi, I'm Courtney Reichegg. This video will discuss what the 12th century Renaissance was and how Peter Abelard and Eloise are symbolic of this time in history. Before discussing what elements define the 12th century Renaissance, we must look at what was happening to the church during this time. The church faced many challenges during the first 500 years of the Middle Ages. Starting in the year 1000, the dynamics of the church started to change for the better. Europe and the church were finally becoming stable economically, politically, and religiously after a period of struggle. This positive change mostly occurred during the 12th century and is now referred to as the 12th century renaissance. The image on the screen is an example of a stained glass window that could be seen in a medieval church during this time period. The 12th century renaissance can be seen as a rebirth of civilization in Western Europe. There were many elements of society that were making a positive impact on society during this time. One positive change during this time was how there was an increase in food production. Climate change, as well as the invention of new farming techniques and tools, allowed for an increase in crop yield. A higher crop yield led to an increase in production, which led to an increase in population. The image on the screen illustrates a new farming technique of a three-field system. Another change during this time was the rise of cities. The increase in people returning to cities is known as urbanization. People were able to return to cities since there was an increase in the production of crops. As a result, people could move to cities because not as many people needed to be farmers. Since not as many people needed to be farmers anymore, more products such as textiles could be produced and then traded. As more people began to move to cities, there was also an increase in trade. One last major positive change during this time was the creation of universities. In the past, only members of the church were able to receive an education. Now, anyone could start to receive an education if they wanted to. There was a guild system in place that governed universities. The teachers were known as masters and had to be certified in order to teach. The masters were a master of a singular topic and would teach their students. Topics that were taught could range from logic to music. The creation of universities and their impact on society can be seen through Abelard and Eloise. Peter Abelard is known as one of the best intellects of all time. He was a great thinker, scholar, philosopher, teacher, and practitioner of rhetoric and disputation. Abelard's want and need for knowledge led him to become a master of logic and rhetoric in Paris. Abelard loved to argue just for the sake of arguing. He pushed his students to look at topics from all perspectives. Abelard became famous for being such an amazing scholar. Everyone in medieval Europe knew about him, and people sought him out just so they could learn from him. Abelard eventually met Eloise and began to tutor her. Eloise had the same want and need for knowledge that Abelard also craved. Eloise could read and speak Latin, Greek, and Hebrew, which was impressive for a male during this time, which makes it even more impressive that a woman was capable of learning these languages. While Abelard was tutoring Eloise, he fell in love with her because of her mind. Abelard and Eloise fell in love. Eloise later became pregnant and her family was not happy about this at all. This was bad for Abelard because scholars were not supposed to be distracted by love, marriage, or children. Eloise had the baby, and her and Abelard had a secret marriage. Since Eloise's family was so unhappy with the situation, they sent a group of men to break into Abelard's room and castrate him. After the scandal of Abelard and Eloise, Abelard became a monk and Eloise became a nun. At this point in time, Abelard began to teach again. This time, instead of just teaching logic and rhetoric, he now applied these topics to religion and theology. Although Abelard was castrated, which is a very traumatic event, this did not stop him from being a brilliant scholar. It allowed him to become an even better scholar by applying his mastery of logic and rhetoric to religion and theology. The image on the screen is an example of what a monastery looked like in the Middle Ages, a monastery is where a monk would live and study. As you can now see, Abelard and Eloise are symbolic of the changes to the education system during the 12th century Renaissance. Abelard and Eloise showed how people were starting to crave the desire for knowledge. Abelard's desire for knowledge allowed him to become one of the best scholars known to humankind. Eloise and her desire for an education and knowledge show that it is possible for women to become educated and not just men. These two figures show how education started to emerge and have a positive impact on society during the 12th century renaissance. Thanks for listening. I hope you learned something about the 12th century renaissance and how Abelard and Eloise are representative of this time in history.